All right, today's Sunday, February uh, 24th, 2019, and I'm getting ready to uh, cut out this firewall for this American uh, auto wire uh, wiring kit for the bulkhead connector. Um, it looks pretty straightforward. Uh, man, but I'm really wishing I would have done this before I painted, uh, but I didn't have the wiring kit at the time. So basically, this is the opening. It's a little bit bigger than the factory, as, as the uh, directions explain. It, uh, you got to cut out the factory hole a little bigger to accept this bulkhead. So it looks like this just sits on top like that. And it's going to poke through the firewall. So I took that and I cut this out. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put plenty of masking tape on the firewall whenever it comes time to cut. But uh, <clears throat> whenever I shave the firewall, I did, uh, the guy that I got the wiring kit from told me that the hole needed to be bigger. So what I did was I cut the factory hole out bigger and uh, that way I'm not cutting through two layers of sheet metal. So right now the hole is plenty big and uh, so I'm going to be cutting on, on one layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole in the middle of that so I can see, see the middle and then I'm going to be cutting from the outside. The directions say to cut from the inside, but I don't see how. I mean, it seemed like it'd be a whole lot easier to do it from the outside. So I'm going to drill a hole in the middle where it's going to give me my center point, and then I'm going to I'm going to trace the template on the outside of the firewall. Um, so yeah, it's pretty pretty straightforward. You're just cutting sheet metal, but wish I'd done this before I painted. So just going to take our time. It's going to be kind of tricky to cut these round edges, so I'm going to have to figure something out. I have my my deburring kit from Eastwood that I might I might be able to round that out. It doesn't look like it has to be such a precise cut because because you have you have some flex here that can cover your cut. So uh, we're going to see. This is part one. Stay tuned. All right, so I got the uh, I got the template drawn out. I think it's pretty straight. Um, the first time I was a little cockeyed, so I redid it. Um, so that's what we're cutting. <clears throat> I drilled the hole in the middle of the square, sorta, just enough to get me there. Um, it's not really a square; it's just a piece removed. Um, so that that opening in that square is is uh, is plenty big. Than, than what I need. So that was the goal on, on cutting that before I painted was that. So now, so basically you have two layers of sheet metal. As you can see here, you have the factory firewall and then, and then my firewall. Um, and I didn't want to have to try and cut double, double layer like that. So I cut the inside hole plenty big and then we put this on there. And now we're only dealing with one layer of sheet metal. So we're gonna cut it. Not sure how I'm going to do the corners here, but we're just going to, there's only one way to do it, so I'm going to use a uh, cutoff wheel on a die grinder. Good thing is I got the, the wheels halfway worn out, so it's small, easy to work with. Go slow enough, hopefully this wheel will last. Uh, so I'll bring y'all back once I cut. Stay tuned. Alright, here's part three of this little today's video, Sunday. Uh, so between Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I got I got I made some progress. I start off with this uh, bulkhead connector. Uh, man, I'm having mixed feelings about this. Um, I just found it a lot harder than it should have been. Uh, mainly because, well, if you were to follow the directions for this thing, it tells you to cut from inside the car. Uh, which I don't see how anybody would be comfortable doing that. Uh, with the, if you have a seat in there and a steering column in there and carpet and all that, you can't, I uh, just don't see that happening. So the template, like I said earlier in the previous video, calls um, for the corners to be rounded. Um, so I tried to do that. I took extra time to try and accomplish that. I think where I made a mistake was where I, I traced the template I trace it on the inside of the template and so my square was smaller than it should have been and sheet metal you know this thick this this is pretty thick gauge uh, from the firewall 
uh, that doesn't flex. And uh, plastic doesn't flex either. So uh, I mean, I test fit back and forth. Um, as you can see from inside here, um, I got it mounted. The, uh, the fuse panel, the bulkhead itself, is much bigger than the hole that you cut. So as you cut, you can't, from inside the car, you can't see what, you're, what you need to do to your cut. If you need to trim a little on the corner or, you know, make it bigger, you can't see because the thing is so big. So it's basically a two-man job. So I got the boy out here um, to look as, as I was trying to mock it up. I ended up having to cut the hole bigger after I already cut a square, so that sucked. Um, but, uh, then I had to cut the actual square that I cut on the original firewall. I had to cut that even bigger to accommodate this thing. This thing is pretty massive. Not, not to mention that all the wires, the whole thing is assembled. So it's not like you can take it apart and, uh, and then you have one piece of plastic that you're working with to, to make your cut and, and, you know, test fit and all that. You're, you're test fitting this whole assembly with all these wires. So that's, it was, I think they should come up with a better design for that. Um, but <clears throat> back to the other side. So I ended up cutting it. I got it to fit. I'm not too excited about the cut. It's, it's crooked. Um, the first cut that I made was much more square, but once you try and cut uh, an already hole, you know, hole that's already there, you try and cut it bigger, it, it you know, it's hard to do, especially freehand. Um, the other thing I don't like about it is the screws. It calls to screw the screws from inside as, as a factory was. Well, these things are sticking out almost an inch out the firewall. There's got to be a better design for that. So I'm going to maybe get some different bolts, actual bolts, not screws, something, fine thread or something, and, and push it in and thread from the inside. Uh, just another trip to the hardware store. Um, another thing that I think they have room to improve is uh, turn the flash off. Uh, they don't offer any trim to cover up this cut. You would think they would have some sort of piece of plastic uh, frame, picture frame looking thing to snap on, snap in place to cover your cut, make it watertight. They do have this foam on the back side, um, but I'm going to make something. I'm going to make something out of some sort of plastic or something. I'm going to figure something out to trim this off. Double side tape it or snap it on or glue it on or something and ditch the screws and I'm going to clean that up because that's the way they say to install it. And I mean, you have a raw cut next to your power steering. I mean, I'm sorry, your steering column boot. You know, you got a shaved firewall, you got brand new wires, you got all this stuff going on, and then you have this raw cut with these screws hanging out. It just, I, I don't know, I just think that they would come up with something better. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up with something better myself. Maybe out of some sort of plastic like a, a car stereo insulation kits, something like that. Make a frame and snap it on or double side tape it on or something. Finish that off. Um, so once, since I, when I finished that, I was, since I was already cutting on the firewall, I went ahead and, excuse me, drilled out the, the hole for the master cylinder, as you can see. I think it's missing some sort of grommet in there. Um, so it, everything's just mocked right now. I'm going to have to paint this. I'm going to order some paint from Eastwood because that's going to rust just like the, the water pump did. So this is just mocked up. Um, so what I did with that, <clears throat> so this brake pedal flashback on. As you can see it has two holes and you see I cut myself. Uh, that was that ain't bad I guess. You had to, you had to cut you gotta cut yourself at least one time a day. So uh, this has two holes and it, it looks like the top hole is nice and level. Uh, if you put it in the bottom hole it's way in a bind. So all this thing is adjustable. Um, so I got that done. Got a new switch here. Well, that's not new, but I do have a new one. So, you know, you go to push the pedal. You know, it moves freely. It doesn't bind. The hole is just big enough. I might drill it out a little bit more. That's a seven eight, seven eight inch hole. Um, but you can see it clears. 
so we got that done um, like I said I went with this CAD plated booster cover you know, brass uh, portioning valve raw finish I'm gonna try and find some cast iron spray paint or something like that brake paint or whatever they call it um, you know so I try to tie that in with the fan belt with the fasteners for the intake you know just try and tie it in together um, last night I got the power steering hoses on these were CPP part of the kit pretty straightforward you only have two hoses so the good thing about this kit is it does away with all the stuff underneath that would normally go here your slave cylinder and your valves and your hoses and you got all these moving parts that just it's a better chance to spring a leak so this the CPP is very basic this is a 500 steering kit uh, you got your gearbox, you got two hoses, one pressure, one return, straight to the power steering pump. That's it. Uh, pretty simple. No slave cylinder, no little miniature hydraulic hoses that the factory setup has. I mean, this is it, two hoses. And uh, See, it just mounts in there. You got one, re one return with the hose clamp, and then the other, the pressure uh, screws in back to the pump. It. I did have to trim the, uh, the return a little bit. Trimmed about probably, I don't know, maybe 10 inches off and then uh, post clean. Uh, then I, I got the gas line done, so this is this is all tight now. I'm gonna clean up, clean the my marks from bends off that. Uh, once the motor sat in, this freed up, gave me a little slack between the A arms, so I was able to run the last, uh, the third, third piece of the stainless uh, gas line. I think it's third, maybe fourth. Short hose to that, pretty simple. This ties in under the frame there. Another rubber hose to that, hose clamps. Also uh, bolted the uh, torque converter to the flywheel last night. So that's done. Um, that was kind of strange because I had to loosen the bell housing a little bit because it seemed like the, the torque converter was in a bind against the flywheel. So I loosened the bell housing and then I was able to, with a pry bar, move the torque converter to line up with the first hole and then cranked it on the front of the crank 5 8 deep socket so you turn it over the motor to get to the other two bolts and then tighten up the bell housing and that's pretty much it so that's what it's looking like so far uh, left is a uh, wiper motor got a short list of stuff I need to buy start the wiring um, it's coming along pretty good so stay tuned for uh, more progress thanks for watching